Prime Minister Ruta Chen and Francis Jacob brother, get out of here immediately because anything is going to happen. Sometimes that is necessary. Mm. Then he said, Mao, you and me will follow immediately. And so on. And he kept talking to, to everybody. <coughs> like he said yesterday, he went and wept in his room. By the time we arrived here, we may have what I call sad eyes, but no tears anymore. There are some words that come to mind when you are talking about Jacob. Courage. Now, not just physical courage. There's that courage of facing danger physically in a physical fight. But there is what we call moral courage. Standing for what you believe in is right when everybody else is going the other way. That is the rarest form of courage. <coughs> it took great moral courage for him to leave the Uganda People's Congress. Loyalty. Jacob was a loyal friend. Generosity. And humor. He used to joke and he said, Mao, God has really assisted us and made you to be a short man. Imagine if you were tall and big. You'd just be terrorizing everybody. That was one of his favorite jokes. He knew that I loved talking, so he said, Mao, oh, when you are sick, we'll just have to take you to the taxi park. And you stand there, and when you see the crowd, you'll feel better. <laughs> After university, we all decided to do what his relatives said here, hustle. We both said bye to our homes. I told my parents, I'm not coming back home. We were like, maybe 20, maybe 20, 19, 20, when we went to university. And after university, we were determined to stay and hustle in Kampala. You can imagine what that kind of life was. And, but we were determined to make it. For me, I see my successor as girl president, Emmanuel Lumala Dombo. These days you see him not very humble, but less chaotic than he was. He was from North Court Hall, so you can imagine. Okay, the only hall is Mitchell, spelled H-O-L-E, because rats live there. So. In university, Jacob's room was the most lively room. It always had bread. So I was a frequent visitor. <laughs> at, the, at the right time. He even had a cooker. And he, he could cook. So visiting him was not entirely without benefit. <laughs> So one day, the University Council decides to make a regulation that student assemblies cannot be held without permission from the University Council. And we had to tolerate that. I was a yet president of the Guild. When I became president of the Guild, and then he became speaker. Then another friend of ours who eventually became his partner of the law firm, Henry Honoria, became the Secretary General of the Guild. We decided that we would defy that, that regulation, that we would call a General Assembly without asking the Vice Chancellor for permission. So I told Jacob, are you going to convene that General Assembly? 
said, yes, of course. Then I said, but we must legitimize it. Let's first call a meeting of the General Representative Council, which is known as the GRC, Guild Representative Council. Put a motion that we must consult students in order to take a resolution to declare a lecture boycott to protest a government policy which was part of the so-called structural adjustment program. At that time we called it stomach adjustment program. <laughs> Basically, the structural adjustment program required the government, the so-called develop, developing countries or the third world, to reduce funding to universities and put the money in primary education. And we resisted that by saying, we don't want a country of clerks, we want higher education to be balanced with, it, with, it, with its primary education. It meant cutting, for instance, what was known as boom, which was an allowance to support students. Uh, two, it also meant that there would no longer be what they call the, the book allowance for students to buy books. They claimed they were going to have something called a book bank. So all those uh, policies were part of that structural adjustment program. So we wanted to protest, to declare a strike, to go on strike. At that time, strike did not mean throwing stones at people who are passing by the road. Did not mean going to Katanga and the other neighboring suburbs around Makerere to steal sodas and mandazis from people. I understand that's what a strike means these days in Makerere, which is a pity, and we have to do something about it. For us, strike meant articulating your disagreement. Of course, we disagreed with the government. So, and then I told Jacob, you may be way laid on the road. So, hide your gown. As the speaker, he always wore a speaker's gown. 